<laughs> hello, 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 hello. Hey, hey, hey. Let's see if I can get this shared to a group. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everybody. Okay, let's see if I can get our guest on here. And of course, wouldn't you know, it says, can you send me an invite? It says that you're not on a phone. You have to be on an iPhone to come on as a guest because I'm actually on here as a phone, on a phone and not a computer. Hey there, you guys. Hey, Nadine. I'm out of Facebook jail, so it looks like more people are getting notifications that I'm actually on here. Hello, hello, hello. Let me um, see what's going on here. Okay, uh, Pastor Brian, there's a, also if you, you are your wife, either of you are signed on a computer in any way, shape, or form, it'll automatically pick up the computer in your name as opposed to the phone. Um, and so that'll also not let me bring you on that way. If you're, um, click out of not just the video, but off Facebook. If you're on a computer, click off the Facebook app, close it out completely. Um, otherwise, it won't let me add you as a guest because it'll pick up the computer before it will the phone, if that makes sense. Aha! There we go. Yay! We got our earbuds ready, you guys, in case there's electric. There we go. Hey, hey Tiffany, can you hear me okay? I can. Good deal. Now, I also. Yeah, let me get my headphones. Let me find those. <laughs> it's going to be a good evening, you guys. Yeah, when um, the temperature dropped, it started to make the sound on Facebook. Now, it doesn't go to YouTube, it doesn't go to any of the other apps, but for Facebook. For some reason, the picture is dropping at the side of the Wi-Fi. Oh, my God, I have no idea. I have no idea. All right. Tiffany, can you hear me? Has that got us going? Okay, okay you sound, sound great. great. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Ooh, I, I sound terrible. terrible. Just a second. Let me. Is that better for us? Yes. All right. No. 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 Are you in? You're plugged in? in? Yeah. Um. You want to unplug, unplug yours, yours real quick, quick and see if it. Yeah. Give me just a second. We rebuke this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That sounds better. Ooh. No, no. Yeah, let me, let me, let me have your AirPods. Yeah, the last time we, the last time we got to do it, I, I was on computer, so I got, I got a little bit better opportunity to, to do it. So I'm, I'm going to get D's uh, AirPods, and we'll go, we'll go wireless tonight. So. Okay. All right. It may not be you. Yeah. All right. All right. And we'll get everything sorted here in a minute. I apologize for the delay. You sound great. Well, it looks like um, it may have frozen, you guys. So let me try taking them off, and we'll try adding them back. back to the oh, there you are. Ah. Okay, that's not working. Okay. Hey there. Hey, Mary. Uh, let's try this again. Let me try again. 
and it's not showing him up on here. Let's try this again. It's always different, you know, when, uh, especially, I don't have the webcam for the computer or that kind of thing, so um, I have to use the iPhone, and for my iPhone, for whatever reason, it won't pick a guest up unless they're on an iPhone. If they're on a computer, it won't. If they're on an iPad, sometimes it will. It just depends. And you know what, you guys, we might jump over to his page if it continues, and don't ask me why it'll do that. So let me see if I can find him on here. I don't see our guest on here. Ah. Let me see. Pastor Brian, if you're on here, maybe you could hop off and then come back on? Because I'm not seeing you. If that makes sense. We may want to end it and start over again and see how that works. Okay, that's not working. So, um, let me, uh, we're going to re well, no, aha, I see him on here. <laughs> up with this y'all we are doing our best here we're going to try something we're going to get on here tonight and you know he's got a word from the lord and uh okay all right now you sound wonderful yes i sound good you do what does everybody on here say what do y'all <laughs> say y'all are the ones listening you know uh you know, we want to sound nice to each other, but if we have a conversation between each other, but y'all can't hear. So does everyone out there hear? Y'all let us know. Absolutely. I think we did this. I think you did. I think we did this, Lord. The Lord did it. Yes, we the did, Lord but... did it. No doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Oh, it sounds good. They're saying it sounds good. Yay. Oh, my goodness, you guys. I'm so glad. And they say... Uh, Pastor Brian, they say that we all sound great, and I think I heard your wife. Do you mind? Could we see her or say hello to she, your wife? She's actually on the other. She's on the other side. Oh. Actually, she's. Uh, we oh, we okay. actually have our desks are back to like front to each other and stuff. So where where I'm finishing up my uh, bachelor's in theological and biblical studies, she she's actually <laughs> finishing up her uh, law degree. So <gasps> so she's uh, so we sit right in front of each other while we're doing schoolwork so oh wow so if i get in jail as opposed to facebook jail i can call no i'm kidding y'all no we are not getting any kind of weird jail in jesus name wow amen you know i like that because the spiritual aspect of that yes. you know going into the courts so to speak defending the rights of the widows and the orphans Wow. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Some of the guests on here may not know who you are. Some of our family and friends out there. Well, I, I, I have always allowed uh, Prophet Tiffany to call me pastor because uh, it's she she just keeps speaking things over me. So it's uh, it's something I'm just not going to let her stop. Uh, but I am um, I'm actually uh, part of a fire ministries uh, myself, uh, my beautiful wife, Deanna, and also uh, my uh, Uncle Dean Gunka Napier is uh, is part of our uh, ministry team, and also uh, Prophetess uh, Leisha Napier. Uh, so we we actually have a great ministry team that is based here in Central Kentucky, and we uh, it's 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 amazing what God has done with this ministry team in the last year. We have uh, we have went from uh, places that just is is amazing. You, you it's all of a sudden you're in the middle of of God's country and here's a beautiful church right out in the middle of the open and you drive for miles and, and we just have a, uh, have a great time in the Lord wherever we go. And, and we just allow Holy spirit to fully take over and be able to allow Holy spirit to just move in any way that Holy spirit wants to, because there's so many places now that, that the spirit is being quenched. And, and we don't want to quench the spirit in any format whatsoever. We want to allow the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to go and, and do what, uh, what needs to be done. But uh, I am, uh, again, like I said, I'm uh, trying to finish up my bachelor's in uh, theological and biblical studies at Regent University, uh, which is a spirit-filled campus out of, 
Virginia Beach, Virginia, and I have uh, got a beautiful wife that I have uh, been married to since. Well, just we'll we'll keep it at almost six months. We've uh, we're still newlyweds, so we uh, and and also um, I've got three amazing kids. Uh, all three of them are uh, wonderful, spirit filled men of God. Uh, my my oldest Jordan is uh, he is actually uh, doing a lot of ministry work. Uh, at his church uh, in Berea, Kentucky, and also my uh, my middle son Matthew is uh, one of the worship leaders for their youth because they they've got an actual worship team, wow. uh, which I I'm proud of him. He's actually uh, tried to hit the big stage uh, not too long ago. He actually auditioned for America's Got Talent, so we're we're finding out in February wow. whether whether he's he gets on the show or wow. not. And then my uh, my my little uh, prophetic son Seth, he is. Uh, he has just turned 15, and he's uh, just absolutely uh, an amazing child of God. He's, he is. Uh, I've, I've seen this child do so many things for the Lord; it's, it's ridiculous. And uh, so that's that's a little bit about me. I mean, I, the biggest thing about me is that I always want people to know that first and foremost, I I was a um, a heathen at one point in time in my life, and uh, and I've strayed away from God. I, I've ran from a calling of God. Uh, back in the wow. back in the late nineties, and I ran for a long time, and then uh, came back to God uh, through the prayers of my children, and uh, so that um, wow. was was a major thing. They, uh, it's something when when we have intercessors and we have prophets and and apostles and pastors and teachers praying for you, but there's nothing like your children praying for you. So that that's a, a major 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 thing in my life, and. Now just trying to uh, obey God and be able to fulfill the the ministry that God has called upon my life and my family's life and just go full throttle for the fire of God. That's that's the biggest part for us. And um, I, I was in radio for a long time. Uh, just a little bit of. Uh, what? Yeah. 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 I, I was. Uh, wow. I, I, I can't believe I've never told you that. But um, <laughs> I was I was a radio disc jockey for quite some time and. And I uh, loved it, but uh, but sometimes with with fame and things like that, uh, it gets to it gets to be prideful, and and you you begin to think uh -huh. that you're at the top of the mountain, and then God squashes you and says you're nowhere close to the mountain. Uh, so so I've uh, after some medical issues and stuff, I actually got out of that that field, and and God said, okay, let's let's do some humble stuff now, and uh, so I've. I've tried to keep a humble aspect on that ever since, and it's it's been uh, it's it's been a, a major major thing because you get your your human flesh gets to the point where you you love all that adoration and all that love and and all that and and I believe that God put me through that to teach me that when when you start doing my work on a full time level, you know these are things uh -huh. that you're just going to just tunnel all the way down and not even listen to because you've been there you know what the results are and it, it was an amazing test so so it's uh every god does everything for a reason and whether wow. whether we think that the position that we're in in our life right now is is gonna is the right thing it, it could be the right thing for this season because god could be testing you on a lot of fronts as to why this is happening and I, I just feel like that that was straight up prophecy, but, but it's, and that could be speaking to somebody right now that, that you're sitting yes. there going, okay, I'm, I'm stuck in the wilderness and, and I don't know why. Well, God could be testing you in the wilderness right now, because again, mm -hmm. why did, why did the children of Israel stay in the wilderness for 40 years? Because they didn't listen to God, you know, and, and so, and the ones that were listening to God, we're waiting for an answer from him. And so we, we have to make yeah. sure that no matter what area of our life that we're in, we, we have to listen to the voice of God to be able to push us into whatever destiny God has for us. So that's, okay. and, and I feel like that was a, a lot of my life as I was wandering in the wilderness, just oblivious as to what God wanted me to do with my life. And, and all along, God said, I called you way back when, but now we got to get back to where I had you to begin with. And, and so that's, that's an area that a lot of people are in. I mean, it's, we, it's sometimes it's easier to run from God than it is to, uh, to run straight to him. So. Wow. And I just love those little facts about you that we didn't know 
You know, it makes you uh, come alive. It makes your life come alive. The fact that God, um, you know, you're not a person way up here that we kind of can't relate to, but you're someone where we're like, oh my goodness, you know, I had that kind of thing going on or, oh, wow, I can relate to that. Look what God's doing in your life, you know? And then the fact that you said your children, come on, your children yeah. prayed you through and out of some stuff. That is amazing. Absolutely. How many people are on here right now? You've got children that prayed you through. I think that is amazing right there. It, it is. And that they're working for the Lord. They, they care about people. They seem to have that genuine love, just like I can tell that you do. They have a genuine love for people or they would not be doing what they're doing. That's one of the things I'm picking up with your boys, with Absolutely. your sons. And I honestly thought your children, because I had remember seeing them mm -hmm. on the timeline um, months ago. I, It must have been, I guess, an old picture, but I, I don't know. I just expected them to be wee little boys. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> and not grown men. <laughs> not, not anymore. I, I have a 20-year-old, a, a soon-to-be 17 and uh, 15. So it's, uh, I've, I've got young wow. men now. I've, I don't, I don't have babies anymore. So it's, uh, well, not yet, but, but we'll, uh, yeah. <laughs> God's still keep us posted on go. that. You guys, we're agreeing as a group that <laughs> they get the desire of their heart that God gave them for children in Jesus name. There you go. Amen. <laughs> Y'all can amen that and agree. <laughs> this is a corporate setting and it's when two or more touch and agree, That's right. we establish a thing. So we're establishing it right now in the name of Jesus for the kingdom of God. This child and children are going to be marked by God, by Holy Spirit. Come on. And there's some of you out there right now. I believe you're wanting that as well. And the Bible says, um, you know, and we've learned through principles that are in the word that, you know, when we pray for others for a thing, then oftentimes we birth that thing for ourselves. Would you mind, if you wouldn't mind, would you mind praying right now? There may be some women or men on here who've wanted to have babies and children and could not get pregnant. Absolutely. Would y'all pray for them? Absolutely. Let's uh, let's pray for them right now. And and Father, in the name of Jesus, we right now, God, just thank you, thank you for for this opportunity, Lord, to be able to come to you humbly, just as Psalm 120 states, the the desires of our hearts, God. And, and we just plead the blood of Jesus over each and every person that is watching this broadcast live or watching this broadcast by replay, that, Lord, that, that you would give them the, the desires of their heart, Lord, that, that for those that, that may not be able to have, that the doctors say they may not be able to have children, Lord, we, we speak life into their womb right now. Yes. We speak life abundantly in, in Jesus' Woo! name for, for that, that creation to be made. And Lord, just as you placed Jesus inside of Mary, we we claim that that mm. right now, God, that that your divine power will yes. will be able to unloose, Lord, these these wombs, Lord, that doctors have said will never bear children. The wombs that that doctors have said that it, it's just too dangerous for you to have children. Well, I I understand that my God is bigger than any situation that can be placed in front of us. And Lord, right now, we claim that. We claim, decree, and declare, God, in Jesus' name, that, Lord, that wombs will be healed. And, Lord, that the people that are on this broadcast or watching it by replay, God, will be able to understand your divine power. That, Lord, that nothing is impossible through your name, God. And, Lord, we claim yeah. that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak it right now as if it's happening right now. We speak for it. Those wombs to be brought to life, and, and just like the dry bones were brought alive, Lord, we, we claim this right yeah. now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father thank God. You, Shoo, that's a good way to get it started. That's a good way to get it started, yeah. Prophet Tiffany. <laughs> wow. We, we I, do this every time. I, Sure. <laughs> I'm feeling the joy. I feel so much joy right now. It's like when you were praying, I kept seeing Father God. He had seeds in his hand. He had the promise in his hand. And he started going. Shoo. And he, he started letting those seeds land in wombs. 
This is spiritual and natural. Yes. I'm just telling you right now, spiritual and natural. And if you're on here and you're believing for somebody to get pregnant and they're not watching this video, share it with them or believe on their behalf. Yes. Because sometimes you can't get people to watch a video, but you can agree, hey, Mary, darling, love you. You can get, you can come into agreement on their behalf. You can stand in their place. Oh, my goodness. I just feel the Lord. Yes. And I feel so much joy. And, and Pastor Brian. I, I do want to say a hello to a special person in, in, in my life. Uh, Apostle Tyler Medina is watching us tonight, and I, I want to give him blessings of God. Uh, somebody that I look up to in the ministry tremendously. So I, I, I'm honored by your presence tonight, sir. So, uh, and Dylan, speaking of somebody else to be honored about, uh, uh, also Prophet Dylan Coleman, uh, it is, uh, usually I'm watching him. So that, that's the, that's the crazy part. <laughs> I, I'm watching him all the time. So I, I want to give him kingdom blessings right now. And, uh, if you don't have Amen. the, uh, the, uh, his book rising of the thoroughbreds, you want to pick that up right now. And, yeah. and you need to, if you need a blessing, uh, pick that book up right now in the name of Jesus. Because it Come is uh, it is amazing, uh, but I, I'll tell you though, Prophet Tiffany, the the biggest thing that that Holy Spirit has been speaking to me uh, about today is is the fact that we are entering into a new season, and and it's it's yeah. there. There's been a lot of closing of of doors in in the last few months for us, and there's a few things that we have have done as as a team that that has allowed a lot of those doors to close because of the um, obedience that we have through, through Christ. And, and it's, I feel like that just Holy Spirit speaking to me today in prayer that there's a lot of people right now that's getting ready to step into a new season of their life. They're, they're getting ready. Ooh. It's they, they've seen what the, the wastelands are in their life. They, they went through a lot of trials and tribulations in, in this past season. And it's just like Holy Spirit has said that though, through the obedience of walking through those storms that God is entering in and opening new doors to, to new things in their life. And, and I know that all of 2018, all we've said is God is doing a new thing and God is doing a new thing after time and time again. But I really believe that that transition into 2019 is opening doors for those new things. I think that 2018 has prepared us. Yes. For what is getting ready to take place. And I do believe that people in this hour yes. are having dreams. They're having visions. The, the Holy Spirit is visiting them in prayer and, and is speaking audibly. I think that, that people are Woo! literally hearing audibly that, that the Lord is doing something <laughs> in their life and is raising them and it's raising a standard. Because if you notice, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get on a soapbox for just for a minute, but I feel like that the Holy Spirit is is wanting this. The big thing is that we're seeing the wickedness of things like Hollywood. We're seeing the wickedness of of just the enemy raising up in different levels all across the world. Whether it's through perversion, whether it's through uh, music, whether it's through movies and things like that, and we're we're now in a turning point where. I feel that the Holy Spirit is telling us you are preparing, but now with us moving into this new season, it is going to open those doors that we've been preparing for. And I know I'm not the <laughs> only one that is that is being able to feel that in the spirit, but but <laughs> what world do we live in? And this is something that, that really tickles me a little bit. It's sad, but it tickles me. Uh, and I was speaking to some, some of my ministry friends about this, and they – they're just like it's flabbergasting. Um, I, I I do a lot of TV, but but it's it's in it's in moderation because I don't want to plague my mind with with what Hollywood and 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 a lot of television <laughs> things are doing to our world. But what kind of world do we live in now when they do a remake of Sabrina the Teenage Witch on Netflix? Okay, I've been reading this story. I've been following it as as hard as I can follow it, and it gets to a point that where it starts offending Satanists. Satanists are getting offended because <laughs> of the show and Wait. what it's depicting of their religion. So, so I'm sitting in this hour going, okay, it's great to be a Christian in this hour because we know that, that the Lord is doing mighty things, that there is things that is getting ready to take place that is going to Come skyrocket on. us 
into another dimension. But even, even the enemy's people are getting offended by what Hollywood is trying to do. So I'm like, right, how, how, are, how is that in, in a world that, that we're dealing with now? So, so if, if you're sitting there tonight and you're wondering in your own life, where, where am I going with God? Where am I going in this hour? Well, I can guarantee you that some part of your life in this year has been preparation. Preparation for what God is trying to kindle inside of you to move you in this hour to push you to your destiny. And we have to remember that God does not shut the doors. We are the ones that step back. If, if we don't want to follow God, we step back and we don't close the door. But what we do is we stand in the doorway waiting to be, move forward. So what we have to do is, as people of God in this hour is we have to move forward when God speaks. And God is going to speak to you suddenly. God could speak Ooh. to you of, of saying you need more preparation. Yeah. But in this hour, we cannot get disappointed. We cannot get disappointed in the things that God is getting ready to do. Because some of us are more prepared than others. So we can't get upset when somebody goes ahead of us because it might not be our time. It might be our time to sit and wait because God has a different mission for you. So if we're, if we're, let's get an example that we're, we're sitting in church and, and we've got an amazing church body where I go. If one brother or sister gets raised up before you do, we are supposed to make sure that we are loving them and pushing them forward into the kingdom. Because what happens is, is if we don't do that, that opens the door for things like offense. It creates doors for malice and, and to be able to, to be like, well, why did they get in and I didn't? And, and I think in this hour, Ooh. God is telling us that right now we cannot be that person. We cannot be Come the on. person of offense. And we, not only offense, but we cannot be a person that gets upset when it's not our turn. And, it, and what we learned as a, as a kid, Prophet Tiffany, we learned as kids that we had to share and we had to take our That's turn. That's right. We had to take our turn on the slide because what happens if you don't take your turn, you go up the slide and you're pushing people out of the way and you're knocking people off, you're hurting people, you're doing this. Come on. And what do you Come get on. when you get to the top of the slide? <laughs> you, you don't get anything but going down the slide. You don't get any, you don't get the full effect of having to wait on the excitement of that slide. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I, I yes. am telling you right now yes. that we have to wait our turn, no matter how long that is. I mean, let, let's talk about it for a minute. I mean, how long did Moses have to wait? I mean, come on. I mean, how? Wow. Job, for that matter. I mean, Job lost everything. <laughs> if anybody on the planet had had a reason to get angry, it was Job, because Job lost Hello. everything. But he still didn't curse God, no matter how many people told him, curse God mm -hmm. and get it over with. He didn't curse God. So we, as people of God, Ooh. have got to understand that it is not in our time frame. It is in God's time frame. And according to my Bible, it says that time is of no essence to God. Come on. So if, if right. so if God wants to wants to automatically right now and turn things around with everybody in this this uh, chat right now and turn right now, it'll happen. But we have to wait. And and I know that my apostle at church preached a message uh, not too long ago about preparing without a purpose. And what we have to do yeah. is we have to prepare for whatever ministry work that God has got set for us. We have to prepare like we don't even have a purpose. And, and exactly like he stated, he said that, that David, for that matter, you know, when, when David was, was found, what was he doing? He wasn't standing up all muscle bound, ready to have that oil poured over his head. He was out with the sheep. Come on now. He was out with the He sheep. was dirty. Yes. He was stinky. He was not in the royal robes. He wasn't even in his best attire yes. at all. <laughs> David was preparing without a purpose because he didn't know. He didn't know. He was like, all, these, all of these other guys are big and strong, and, and that they could be the next person automatically and all that. And no, because God can use anybody. 
And you have to understand that. That word is for somebody tonight that God yeah. can use you regardless of what background you come from, regardless of what you come look on. like. If you're completely tattooed up, God will use you. And, and that is something come that on. you can't lose excitement about the kingdom of God because in your weakest hour is when God shows up and said, good, good job, my well and faithful servant. You have to, now is the time that I'm going to use you. And I know in my own life that the enemy has attacked my family. Uh, and, and I, and, and the enemy's not real smart sometimes. I mean, the enemy's smart, but sometimes let's, let's just call it like it is. They give us too many easy signs. Because if, if you know God is, is moving in your life and you know that God is, is doing something strong, who shows up? The enemy does. And the enemies, it's, it's kind of like, you know, why? Why, why, would you, why would you do that? And, and it's just the fact that goes to show that God's power is, is going to rectify every situation in your life, whether it's the enemy attacking you, whether it is, it is a, a problem with a family member, whether it's sickness whether it's, it's whatever the case may be, God is ready to use you. But what you have to do is you have to prepare yourself and get ready for when he does. You know, I, Come on. I give a, a good analogy that I used to be a huge sports fan. I'm not as much anymore because God takes up a lot more of that time now. But, yeah. but the, the athletes, let's look at, at the NBA for, for a minute. These guys are, you know, they've got a season that they go through that they play 82 games in a season. What are they doing when they're not in that season? They're still training. They're training for the next season that's coming up. Children of God, let me tell you something. If you're not training all season long, that's what we have to start doing. We have to start training and building ourselves up and asking Holy Amen. Spirit to give us a stronger foundation for what we're getting ready to move into. That is what's Come really going to matter. That's what's really going to matter for, for us in our walk in 2019 is that we have to be prepared. We have to be prepared in a way that when the enemy comes, we recognize it automatically and we start praying against that. We have to recognize that yes. when those old things that used to, used to make us feel good, oh. when those things start raising mm -hmm. up, we recognize it and we tell it to go away in Jesus' name. We have Woo! to prepare for that. And you have to prepare all season long. This just isn't, there is no regular season and off season in the kingdom of God. There is none. And, and unfortunately, there's folks that in the world that believe that that's true, that, that we have an off season. You don't have an off season in the kingdom of God. Because the minute you let your guard up, you're going to miss out on a blessing of walking somebody to Christ or, or being able to spot a lot of things going on in the world. And, it's, exactly. I just, I don't know. It, it's God has really laid that on my heart today that, that we have to always constantly prepare. We have to prepare for what God is getting ready to do in this coming year. Amen. And I see that like you're talking about the athlete. I want to bring out some points that you brought out that I just really, really spoke to me. And I see it's like you said, if you or a person are standing in the door, a doorway, and as you said that, it made me realize that, that if you're a parent and you're standing in the door when God says to move forward and you don't move forward, you could very well be a hindrance to your children getting through that door. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. I mean, they're coming up behind you. And if you're the generation that refuses to move forward, literally, it could be a hindrance. Yes. Um, sometimes we don't even think that. We oftentimes think, well, this is just my walk. This is my individual thing. It's not affecting anybody. But really, our lives, there are so many people looking on Yes, that it could be affecting. Um, and then you were talking about the birthing. You know, the Bible talks about in Revelation chapter 12 how the enemy is ready as the woman is ready to give birth. He's standing there to devour the child. Yes. But what happens? The earth opens. You know, later it talks about how a flood came out, you know, and it went after the woman. You know, the, the serpent, the devil, didn't get to eat her baby. Come on. Why? Because she was trusting in the Lord. That can represent, yes. obviously, Jesus being born of Mary, but it also can represent the body of Christ, each one of us individually. And I noticed um, 
you know, the earth, it said the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the flood that the enemy sent out to overtake the woman. Well, each and every one of us is the woman. We're supposed to be praying and uplifting each and every one of us, each other. And you, like you said, it's jealousy and those things get in the way. Yes. Oh my goodness. I love those points that you brought out in that. You know, we can't do that. Like you said, eventually if, if we keep, if we stayed in that situation of getting jealous every time someone else is elevated, the Lord will pull you back. Yes. Cause in, like you said, in that wilderness, in the wilderness, is, he's pressing. He's pressing on that threshing, threshing floor. He's pressing us to get that jealousy out. And sometimes you might think, why am I manifesting that? Because it's in there somewhere. Yes. Admit it. Tell God about it and say, I repent for being jealous. It's like, I, I mean, I went through a time and a season where I noticed other people getting elevated. And I was like, my gosh, every time it happens, I smile. I say the right things. I do the right things but I still feel it inside. And that's when I realized, oh my goodness, I need to confess that. That's laying in wait. It's like a hidden demonic thing is just laying there doing this number. And I was like, God, pluck it up and out. Just get it out. I don't care what it takes. And it took a lot of, it took a lot more of seeing others elevated and having, again, more of the right response and confessing it when I felt that way for it to go. And it really did. I, I agree with that. And the, the great part is, and I, I'll give you some examples, uh, the, when you see somebody in your church that's being elevated before you, understand something. Them being elevated could be the very reason you get elevated. Come on. And, and if, we, if we all of a sudden let our fleshly desire, which thank you, Paul, for always saying that I die daily, that gives us a constant reminder of who we are. But if, if we start allowing that human flesh to overtake what God is trying to maneuver and do, because one, we don't know that that, that other person could have been in prayer a lot longer than we have. That person could be laying face mm -hmm. down 10 hours a day with God to build a relationship with him. Yeah. You know, and here, and here we are with a, with a one or two hour prayer time and we're getting all puffy because, because of that simple fact. But God is, is never going to show up at the wrong time. So always understand that if somebody's getting promoted or, or moved up and thank you, Holy ghost, I don't know why I just use promoted, but I'm sure that'll come back later is that you may be the next one to do that because of who has God has raised up before you. And don't let that be your demise by, by letting that malice and that offense and, and that hurtfulness and disappointment come into your own life. And I've been guilty of the same thing. So, come on. you know, I'm, I'm sitting here, you know, going, I, you know, what, what is, what's it going to take, you know, sometimes, but, but God is going to show up at the proper time to see those things and those desires to work because God's plan right now, God is what is in heaven right now, working a plan out for you. Now, granted that plan has been done already for a long time, but to us in the human mind, God's working a plan up for you. So, yeah. so we can't get discouraged. I love how you bring that eternal aspect, the Kairos and Kronos time. You know, God's outside of time. He's written it all. He's done it. It's completely finished. And yet at the same time, because we're living in time, it's like it's being worked out. Absolutely. It, it, that's wild how that is. But um, do you feel comfortable right now? I really feel like praying for people on here yes. to go through doors, to have the boldness, to uh, have the favor, to be promoted, these different things. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I do. And, and I know that, uh, that our last broadcast we had, we Holy Spirit showed up automatically. But I think that tonight, you know, God is, is really trying to deliver a message to somebody that is going to speak mm -hmm. not only tonight, but it's going to speak throughout. And so, yeah. so now, I mean, we're, we're, we'll move into this because God is, every time you and I get together, Tiffany, the Holy Spirit starts working and, and I, I, I want us to start seeing, <laughs> I, I know that, that signs, miracles and wonders yeah. begin to happen. And, and it's because we both are uh, efficiently searching for Holy Spirit and, and how Holy Spirit can move mm. even more in our own life. But uh, right now I'm just, I, I've got a couple people that, that the Holy Spirit has already dropped in my spirit, but we'll save that for a, another minute here. Uh, but I want to speak forth right now that, that Father God, we, we thank you for the doors that you open in our life. We thank you 
for not only the open doors, God, but we also thank you for the closed doors. And and Prophet Tiffany, mm. I'm I'm really feeling in the spirit right now that there's some folks uh, that is watching our broadcast that is should be thankful for some closed doors right now. That there's some mm. closed doors. <laughs> well, praise God, right there we go. So so I'm now I'm prophesying to the prophet. So um, but uh, <laughs> we just ask God right now in Jesus' name that that Lord that the ones that are seeking those doors, God, that, that this new year and this new season that you are uh, bringing forth in, into life, God, that, that people are able to not only move into those doors, but Lord, they are stepping into it. They're stepping across the threshold and they're taking giant steps now because of the growth that they've had over the course of this year. And God, I, I plead the blood of Jesus right now over their life as they step into those new doors so that, Lord, that that covering is there for them, that, God, that the covering that you have put upon them will stay there so that, God, I, I know that you spoke to my own life and you said new season always brings bigger demons. So so what we want to do, Lord, is, is we want to speak forth that those bigger demons aren't, aren't going to be anything that's according to our life because we are going to move past them and we're going to learn through you to defeat them like we did the ones in our prior season. So, Lord, we are speak right now. We speak that restoration in other people's lives that are moving into doors of restoration. We speak forth life, God, people that are moving into doors of ministry, people that are moving into doors of, of just a new thing in you, God, because some of us, Lord, have just been seeking your face. That's all we've been doing. We haven't been seeking a position. We haven't been seeking anything that, that, that can be given to us in an earthly manner. We've been seeking your face. Mm -hmm. And God, that, that we open that door to where we get to see your face more. And we're able to see clearly, God, what your direction and what your guidance is. And Lord, I speak forth a clarity of understanding in this hour, God. I, I rebuke you. I, I rebuke right now in Jesus' name any spirits of confusion that is trying to speak forth these times of change of season, God. There's some folks right now that, that are watching this broadcast that are having times of confusion. And Lord, I speak against that confusion right now in Jesus' name that because you are not the author of confusion. You are yeah. not the author of fear. And there's some folks that right now are, are fearful for those new doors that are opening because it's something they've never experienced before. Well, Father God, we understand as well that you are not the author of fear. So, but yeah. that of a, of a clear mind. And Lord, we speak for clear minds into the people that are watching this broadcast right now in Jesus' name. We speak forth a clarity, God, that is going to bring forth a, a clarification in their life, God, that it's going to bring revelation. Shoo. Mm -hmm. I, I speak forth revelation into people's lives right now through the Holy Spirit. That right now that you have been seeking a word from the Holy Spirit, whether to move on certain things. Shoo. Mm-hmm. Yes, Lord. Wow. Mm -hmm. But God, we just ask that those doors be blown open in the year of 2019 Amen. for the for the obedience of your people, for not only the obedience of your people, God, but also, God, for listening to you properly. God, sometimes we can try Come to get on. ahead of ourselves, but we speak forth that reward for staying put and listening for that small, still voice so that we can move forward into that door. And we thank you, Lord, and we praise you for what you're going to do in these people's lives in 2019 and what you're going to do even farther than that. And I speak forth, God, just a blessing. I speak forth for those that are hurting right now, Lord. I speak forth a, just let their hearts be healed and restored, Father God. That, Lord, that let them always know that joy cometh in the morning. And I speak forth, Ooh. God, that not only that joy cometh in the morning, but, God, that they'll be restored to where they are that you need them to be, God. That do not let their hurt be a deterrent on, wh on which direction they need to go, Lord. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm hearing for Carmen Cruz. Carmen Cruz, mm. I believe you're still on here, honey. Carmen Cruz, what I'm hearing for you is that I, I hear move forward. Mm. Move forward with that. Go ahead with that. Move forward. You've been asking, should I go through that door? Do I need to? Whatever. Go. Move forward. This is your move forward season. And I feel like there has, like you're, you've been stuck in the mud like a quicksand up to the knees now for at least three months. Mm. And I'm telling you right now, I feel like the Lord is saying, he, Ruash Hokadesh, has you by the arms. Holy Spirit. Now, that's the wind of God, the breath mm. of God. I wouldn't have thought he would have used himself in that manner but it's like the wind of god has got your hands and your arms and is pulling you forward god doesn't force you to do anything but he's pulling you and plucking you up and out of that mud he's pulling you out of that and this is for other people as well where you have been stuck where your feet have been weighted down with weight it's like you were in cement shoes or you have been in the mud and the cement up to your knees and you've been going through life feeling like there's just a, a sluggardness on you. Like you just cannot wade through it. You're trying and you're giving it your all. You are pushing yourself completely over and over and over and over again. Well, the Lord says that this is the time that he's plucking you up and out of that. He's pulling you out of that hindrance. We rebuke that devil yes. that has uh, that structure, and some of it mm -hmm. is the mindset, but that thing that has come against you with that lethargy, come on, that thing that has tried to hinder you to make you feel like you cannot move forward financially, you can't move forward in various uh, areas, aspects, mm -hmm. or ways. I'm telling you now, what was in your way has been removed. You have been plucked up and out of that, and you are on dry ground. You are on good ground. Mm -hmm. It is firm ground, and you are not sinking in the name of Jesus. No more sinking. Mm. No more sinking. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. And Thank and I Jesus. I've I don't I only look at, at some of the, the chats here because it, it's going by so fast, but I don't like looking yeah. at them anyway because it's uh, it's it can be distracting at times. But the the Holy Spirit has dropped the name Susan in, into my, my spirit. And Susan is it, what I'm seeing from Susan is that she's waiting in a swamp right now. And it's, it's, she's got alligators and, and crocodile all the way around her. It's, it's almost like that there's a, it's like she's surrounded almost. And it's, and it's like that this is the way that your entire year, maybe even longer than a year that has, has been set up. It's, it's constantly, you move to the left and you get attacked. You move forward, you get attacked. You move to the right, you get attacked. You move backwards, you get attacked. Mm. And and I'm seeing those those alligators and crocodiles just snap it at Susan. And what God is telling Susan right now is that one is that I am always going to make a way for you to be released from the enemy. And there is a part of your prayer life that needs to be intact and that is the it's not that you lack faith it's that you are lacking the ability to understand exactly who your savior is you don't understand the power that he possesses and you don't understand that he can get you out of that entire situation altogether so whoever susan is and and we'll i'm sure we'll find out if that's a family member or someone that's that's in chat or something like that God is speaking to you directly to get out of the swamp because you, it, it could be the fact that you have drug your feet for so many years and, and it just keeps getting deeper and deeper and deeper until you're so deep that now you're swimming with the crocodiles and the alligators. And God said, it's now time is enough. You need to get out of the swamp. I don't know about you, but if that ain't for Susan, that'll preach because that's for Susan. Yeah. I'm telling you, that's for Susan, that but it's more than one person on here. And, and as you were praying and prophesying, I saw the Lord stretch a line of confusion out over those alligators and crocodiles. And I saw the hand of God come up, Jesus himself, shoot. reach out, grab her by the hand, and pluck her up and out of that yes. swamp. And I saw the alligator and crocodiles immediately as they went and dove for her at the last minute, the Lord rescued her. They began to attack and eat each other. The Bible says he will cause your enemies to turn on themselves yes. and destroy each other. 
and I'm seeing that in the life of Susan. And it's more than just Susan. If you're on here and you felt that that was you, you need to receive that word. Yes. And to see right here, Juanita said she's grabbing that for her. Yes, I'm telling you, on. believe by faith, and that is what is happening. Mm -hmm. I decree and declare right now, those crocs and alligators in your life, the things that came to utterly rend, rip, and destroy you and put you to shreds and shame and do away with you. I'm telling you, they are doing away with each other. Yes. And you have walked out free. You've escaped the trap. I'm telling you, it's like a trap. You were plucked from the trap. You were plucked from the mouth of the enemy. Yes. And by the mercy of God and a loving father. Praise God. Praise God. I, I'm seeing some of these, some of these folks in chat. Praise God. Accept it because... Because if anybody can redeem you, it is, it is the Lord. And, and just like you said, prophet, the, we go back to the story of Jehoshaphat and, uh, and, the, and basically the, the fact of, of Jezebel and Ahab thinking that they had everything won, that they, that they are straight up, they, nothing could defeat them. And then what happens is, is that the army comes up and they see, the other, they see uh, Jezebel and Ahab's army fighting each other and killing each other. And and God spoke and said, I will put the enemy out of commission for you. And, and, and I mean, what what kind of battle do you have to be in that you didn't have to raise a sword? All you had to do was worship the entire way. And what God is speaking to you is while you're in your trial and you are getting yourself out of these messes that that the enemy has tried to put you in, you need to worship your way out of it. You can't physically fight. You can't physically fight that battle. You have to allow God to do it and worship and praise him for being your fighter and for being the one that, because he's the victor anyway. He's the victor anyway. So, so you need to make sure of that you, you know who your victory relies in. It's, it's who your victor yeah. is. It's, it's, you know, we could sit here and talk all day about problems and, and talk about how bad days have went and, and talk about how, this and that has went wrong in our life. But when we wake up, we need to clap our hands in the morning and say, Lord, Woo! you're my victor. Today, I yeah. claim victory in my life through the name of Jesus. I mean, what kind of, what kind of savior do we serve, guys, that he gets to, a, to a, a forbidden land and he runs up on a legion of demons and they recognize him? I mean, Jesus had been on the earth for 30 some years had only done ministry for three years and that they knew who he was in man form i mean what kind of what kind of god do we serve we serve a powerful one and they looked at him and they oh, said yeah. lord do not send us back to the abyss where we came from put us in the swine and let us run off the the hilltop and that's what they did Woo! Because let me tell you, when you start taking authority over your situation in the name of Jesus and you start sending those demons back to the abyss where they came from, that is where Woo! you're going to get your victory. Because I'm, I'm going to give you guys a news flash, and we're going we're gonna, to, we'll, this will probably break into all kinds of prayer. Just because we're Christian doesn't mean we don't need delivered. Oh, come on now. That is so true. So true. And and it's it's something that we get embarrassed of as Christians because we we're gonna mess up. We're gonna mess up. Even when we're 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 stretching to be holy, we we have to understand that this flesh is weak yeah. and corrupt. It is weak and corrupt. We sin every day. And so what we have to realize is is that we have to push forward to be holy. And guys, I mean there, there's yeah. I, I've been delivered of things. I mean, I mean, I'm not, I'm not anything perfect at all. I, I've been delivered from all kinds of things. And what, what has to happen is, is we have to get into the frame of mind that it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about our walk with Christ as long as Christ is happy with us. That's, That's what right. matters. So somebody needs to know tonight that whatever road you're on, you can be healed from that. Whatever deliverance that Come you on. need... God can deliver you from that. You just have to speak with your mouth and say, Lord, I Come understand on. what's taking place in my life. I need this released in Jesus' name. Release Come it on. in Jesus' Woo. name. Do not let the enemy Woo. win in your life. Somebody needs that tonight. Do not let the enemy take what has been taken from you for so long. 
Somebody needs restoration. Shoot. Tiffany, we're doing it again. Oh, Here we go. Goodness. Holy, holy spirit this is. This is wild. So wild. I'm going to tell you the stuff that I'm seeing that you're saying. As you were speaking, I literally began to see somebody on here. There are a lot of somebodies on here. Y'all been having dreams of cobras, black panthers, various different serpents and spirits. But I'm telling you, I saw... Uh, I saw them envenomating themselves. I saw the snakes just reaching down and biting their own chest. They were meant to bite you, but they decided to bite themselves. Why? Because the Lord has, again, has stretched a line of confusion yes. over your enemies. Come on. They're biting their own tails. They're, they're biting each other. Come on. They, they were authored to take you down, but God has turned it. He's turned it away from your face, Come away on. from your house. It's the mercy of God birthing around you. Many of you, the reason you're receiving this mercy is because you've been merciful. Yes. Others, you look and go, you don't understand. I wasn't very merciful. Why would God do this for me? Because he is a God of mercy. Yes. Come on. He is a God of love. And oftentimes he will give us mercy when we didn't even need it, didn't even deserve it. Come on, I mean, now we needed it, but what I'm saying is uh, we didn't expect that he would give it to us. We didn't think our need, like he could meet that need. Does that make sense? But he's so loving that there are times, and we can't get mad at people. That's right. Come on. When Stay right they there. receive mercy, come on, when they receive mercy, and then we look at our own lives, and we're like, well, where's my mercy? Come on, it's coming. That's right. Don't be upset when you see somebody else doing, maybe their life is all jacked up. They repent and suddenly God comes in and makes it all go away. And you're like, well, they should have gone to jail or they should have, the church should have thrown them out. But they repented that's and right. God showed them mercy and God's turning their life around. That's right. And that's what he's doing for many of you on right here right now. I'm just telling you. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I, I don't know about you, prophet, but the Bible plainly states that all have sinned and came short of the glory of God. That's that right. doesn't leave anybody out. That's so right. let me tell you something. If you bet, if your shoe, somebody's battling church hurt right now in here tonight. The Holy Spirit has just dropped church hurt into my spirit, and I believe that that whoever Ooh. is is somebody is being delivered of that church hurt because they needed that word of mercy tonight that you just gave, right. Prophet Tiffany. That that mm. is if if we could ever have one offense that that can break a church in half, it is total church hurt. Regardless of whatever happens, church hurt can inf infest a church quicker than anything. And I feel like that right now that there are people that are suffering from that, and we need that message of mercy, and we need the message yeah. of understanding that we're human and we mess up. We mess up. That's right. But there is a God that is bigger than any situation. There is a God that will forgive you of every sin that you have ever committed. There is a God that if you get on your hands and knees and you cry out, Abba, Father, I need you to forgive me of such and such sin. Guess what? There, the Bible plainly states that there will be celebration in heaven for that. Because what happens is, is that that is erasing cleanly what you what you are has been plaguing you for so long? Come on, we we need <laughs> to always understand that repentance is always available to us, but it does not give us a reason to sin. That's a message Amen. that I think we need in a lot of churches. Is that that we're getting into that grace side of it, and and we we need to get away from we don't need to get away from grace. We need to get away from the fact that it's. It's okay, whatever I'm doing, I just repent. That that isn't the way it works. That the the way it works is is that right. we repent and we do not go back. That's what that's Come what on. true repentance is all about. But I pray right now, and I speak forth right now, that whoever is dealing with church hurt right now, that you are being restored of that right mm -hmm. now in Jesus' name. That before the end of the year, shoo. Mm-hmm. I am, I am, the Holy Spirit is, <laughs> shoo. And it's not necessarily a pastor that you're mad at. It's somebody of, of elder leadership that you're mad at. It could be a deacon. And so I, I prophesy right now in the name of Jesus that before the end of the year, 
that that relationship is restored in Jesus' name. In the name I of plead Jesus. the blood of Jesus over that relationship. And I, and I speak forth that if you got family members that you're not talking to, that it could be part of that as well. It could be part of that, that, that it's family church hurt. could be part of the, the situation. Right. That before the end of the year, that those relationships are restored in Jesus' name. That yeah. the Lord is going to not convict you, but to give you a feeling that this is something that has to be done quickly. Because we cannot afford in this hour to be mad at people of God. We cannot afford it. Because what happens is, is that opens the door for the enemy to come in, and we cannot afford the enemy to be in our churches. We cannot afford that. So, so restore relationships. 2018, we need to finish it off right, and then let those doors open in 2019. Some of y'all might need some of those doors closed before you can open up doors in 2019. Amen. That's, Amen. And you know. Mm. So, so we, we need restoration. We need restoration in, in our, our church bodies. We need restorations in our families. And some of those aren't going to yes. get done in, in, a, in a great, a fast amount of time. Some of those are going to take a lot of time. But I, but I pray right now that whatever that situation is, that the Lord will begin to, to pave that path and plant that seed that those relationships are restored. Yes, 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 hmm. yes. And for those of you who've done everything that you can to restore a relationship according to what God wants, all you can do in that situation is let God work. And that can mean for a certain amount of time disconnecting from the individual. Okay? Yes. And sometimes it can be even longer than that. But even that can be what's called restoration. God takes you to a place of wholeness. They get to choose if they want to be whole or not. They get to choose. That's right. Okay? That's so, right. God can work on their hearts when we forgive. We have to forgive because we do not want somebody being held back and veils still on their eyes because we refuse to forgive. When we forgive a person who's got a hard heart, it actually uh, allows a tenderness, Holy Spirit, to come and speak to them tenderly. Veils will actually start to come off of their eyes yes. because why? When you forgive them, you begin to pray for them. You begin to bless them with God's great love, mercy, and grace. Mm. Come on, prophet. That's what happens when we forgive. And so um, I don't want to divide the stream or like go off into something weird. I keep getting these strange, uh, somebody on here with an arm, uh, a broken arm. Mm. You've got something going on with your arm, one of your arms. Who is that on here? I keep, I keep seeing that mm. pop up in the feed for whatever reason. I keep seeing that. Mm. I keep seeing that. No, you you go you go as the as the Holy Spirit <laughs> leads you, prophet. And, okay, and for somebody, it may have just been a sharp pain in your arm, and you don't know what that is, and it keeps coming and going, coming and going, coming and going. So please put uh, put that on here. And let us know who that is, because I want to rebuke that right now. Mm. I I could command. It's like a serpent has bit you on the arm. We command that bitterness. Sure. Oh, now I see where this is going. It's going right back mm, to what yep, uh, yep. Pastor Brian has been talking about, that restoration. We command where the serpent bit you and bitterness went in for that bitter gall to come back up and out of your bloodstream, out of you spiritually, and to go up into, out of your mind, out of your will, out of your mm. emotions, to go back up into the fangs of that serpent right now in Jesus' name. Mm. And we just say that that serpent, angels come and drag it off, <laughs> tied up, put it in a bag, and just cast it away into a fiery pit. Yes. The abyss right now in Jesus' name. Yes. Prophet, I, I'm almost, I'm almost. Um, Laura to, said that was her. To the point that it's, it's almost like a fibromyalgia as well. Mm. Uh, that, that it's, okay. it's this uncontrollable pain where, where see, even seeing people like they're dropping things with their hands, that, that it hurts that Ooh. bad. And, and it's, it's, just like, just like Prophet said, it's it's that that snake that's wrapping around, and and I mean, you know, we have to understand, you know, there's there are python spirits that 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 will try to uh, attach itself to you, and and that's uh, one and one of the quickest ways is through the spirit of offense. So that is uh, that's something that has to be healed in Jesus' name, it has to be loosed off of your life in Jesus' name, Jesus. and uh, and we need to continue to pray with you about that in Jesus' name. Uh, because um, because they're they're it's it's a it's a nasty spirit it's a nasty spirit 
and it um, and it loves to yeah. get tighter and tighter. And and what we have to do is we have to take it off with joy and happiness and through the love of Jesus. And what happens? What you'll see is that that serpent yeah. starts loosening, and it's whoo, mm, and it's it starts loosening off of you to the point that it falls off. <laughs> but see, but see a, a spirit mm-hmm. like that, you can't go full head with it because then it'll start tightening up even more. And and it's so much that it's cutting your circulation off your arm. So we want to loose that. We want to loose that with the love of God. We want to loose that yes. with with joy. Yeah. We want to loose that and 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 if this is a spirit of offense, if this is a spirit that is is because of a, a church hurt or a family hurt the only way that that can start loosening is by that relationship starting to be healed and, and for you to forgive and, and for them to slowly start forgiving and moving forth. And that, that snake starts falling off slowly because, because that python, okay. was, it's a slow Amy. process. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Paul. Amy says that's her. She had had that fibromyalgia. I was just letting you know um, the comments, anybody on here, if you're watching the video, you want to see the comments, you can touch your screen and either take it to the right or take it to the left. And the comments will pop up. Sometimes you can just touch the screen and the comments will pop up. But Amy Pulsin put on here, she said, please pray for me that she has fibromyalgia. That basically you're talking about her. She really feels like that word is for her. And what was her name again? Um, Amy. Was that Amy? Amy. Let me look Amy, again. Okay. Amy Pulsin. Well, I, I want to pray for Amy. I also want to pray for Cindy that I just saw in the in the chat as well. She said she's been battling with with things for two years, and and we we just want to speak mm. right now that that and and Brandy as well. It looks like here in the in the the comments, diagnosed with lupus and fibromyalgia. Mm-hmm. All right, well we're gonna we're gonna speak forth healing right now. And what I need what I need you three ladies to do is I need you to to first we need to repent. I'm I, I'm going way off kilter right now. We're gonna repent, and and I'm gonna and, and I'm gonna pray with you because because here's the thing: you want power in prayer, and you want power over situations. Repent and see what happens. Because Woo! because what's gonna take place is you're gonna get heaven stirring. You're gonna get heaven yes, stirring yes, from from, yes. from that repentance that you're doing, and and that is gonna get us in the mind of Christ. Because then that, that's something that's been washed away. So I want you all to, to first say, Lord, I forgive me of, of this sin. And you call it out. Call it out by name. Because mm-hmm. let me tell you, you want to get rid of something, you call it out. Okay? And we call it out now. And we ask for repentance in Jesus' name. We ask, Lord, that you forgive us of those <laughs> sins. <laughs> and you forgive us, God, of anything that we have done in the past. And forgive us of anything that we're going to do in the future, Lord, that we're able to come to you and come to your throne blameless and spot-free, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I speak forth healing right now in these ladies' arms, in their shoulders, in their bodies right now that are, that are being dealt with with fibromyalgia, lupus, whatever the case is. I speak forth to you now in Jesus' name that you can no longer live in this body. You can no longer be a part of this person's life. And I speak forth healing because my Savior took the stripes. And he said, through the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. And we are decreeing, we are declaring in Jesus' name right now that healing is going to come forth. And that these ladies are going to get the fire of the Holy Spirit in those areas that are, that are plaguing them right now that they're going to get a burning sensation as a, as a symbol that the Holy Spirit is working in that healing. Because, Lord, I pray right now that you let your miracle signs and wonders begin to Woo! flow in these people's lives. Lord, I don't know them. They don't know me. But, Lord, I will tell you what I do know, and that is by your stripes we're healed. I will continue to claim that until my dying day, Lord, that through your stripes, healing is yeah, taking yeah, place, yeah. that people are beginning to be set on fire through the Holy Spirit Woo. because that healing is taking yeah. place because where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in the midst. We call down heaven. We call down the angels. Yeah, yeah. We call down the Holy Spirit right now ah. for healing in the name of Jesus. 
Shoo. I feel the healer in the house tonight. Yeah. Shoo. Yes, Lord. Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, I claim that healing in these ladies' lives. Lord, let their healings be a living testimony. Let their healings be a living word upon this earth, God, yes. that you are still in the healing business. That, Lord, that if we drop all this craziness of the world and we put our eyes on you and we understand that it is through you that the power comes from that lord that you're going to heal us not only our bodies and sickness but you're going to heal our minds our hearts and lord that you're going to take us and you're going to wrap us around in your arms and you're going to say very good my faithful servant and you are pleased with us yes. Shoo. Mm. Who? Move, Lord. Move yes, over Lord. these people, yes. Lord. Yes. Lord, I yes. know we're on a social media platform, but Lord, you'll you'll heal somebody on a social media platform as much as you will right in front of them. And I plead the blood of Jesus over everybody's life that's in this chat room that is watching this broadcast. I plead yes. the blood of Jesus over you right now. Yes. And encourage I ask, others. If you're feeling the presence of God, if you're feeling the presence of God, I want you to put that on here. Whether you feel inspired, whether you feel pain has left, whatever it is you're feeling in your body that God is doing, put that on here to encourage somebody right now in Jesus' name. Encourage those around you. And I, and I want to tell you a word, prophet, and I ain't going to slow down from all this healing, but God is saying to you right now that he is pleased with you. That he is pleased with your decisions in life. And he is pleased that you will not allow anything to compromise the gospel of your life. <sighs> I receive he, that. He, I receive He that. is telling you to take that crown that he has placed upon your head and straighten it up and to move forth. Because <laughs> this is not only the everybody that's watching this broadcast, but this, is, this 2019 is going to be your year. This is going to be your year of multiplying, of being able to, to see things happen in your life that you've never seen. This is going to be your year to be able to, you're going to, you're going to yeah. encounter networks that you never thought that you could enhance in this, in this upcoming year. They're already talking about you. I can hear it in the spirit right now that those men and women of God are already talking about you. They're talking about you in public. They're talking about you in behind closed doors saying we need this woman of God in our network because she is seeing God. She is hearing God. And we receive that. I receive it for you right now in Jesus' name. I receive name. that word. I receive Shoot. that word. Wow. Praise the Lord. Shoot. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wow. Shoo. <laughs> I receive that. I'm telling you. It's good to get encouragement. I love to pray for y'all, but I love it when y'all turn around and pray for Shoot. me. Thank you. Hmm. Thank you, Pastor Brian. Oh, I received that. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. yep. It's like I don't want to disturb the atmosphere. Yes. <laughs> so beautiful and peaceful. There, there is a joy about what God is doing right now. There, there is a joy and a calmness as to what it's it's almost to the point of when Jesus was in the boat with the disciples and he said, peace be still. And and that's what I'm feeling right now. And mm. I feel that, that the Lord is taking, whew, is that the Lord is taking people's problems and he's calming them. I, I feel like that people's lives yeah. right now, I feel that some people have even done this in their seats. They just lean back as they're listening to the broadcast because the Holy Spirit is coming upon them. I feel that some people, could start weeping. We we could start seeing people travailing in the spirit <laughs> right on this broadcast. <sighs> and shoo. Mm. Wow. Shoo. Mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes, 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 yes. Lord, just just praise him for a minute. Lord, I, I thank, thank you right you. now. Lord, for loving us enough that that you that you would make us in your image. Lord, that, that you would make us 
Lord, to worship you and to praise you and to magnify you, God, and to be able to bring just uh, your spirit to people, God, that might that some, some people might just be feeling the spirit like this for the first time ever. This could be a brand new thing. Receive it. Receive it tonight. Lord, we thank Several you. People. Mm-hmm. Several have said that they can feel shifting, stirring the peace. They're laid back. It's such so calming. They feel heat. Somebody feels heat in their hands. Come on. That's the Holy Spirit wanting to do work in you. Mm-hmm. Heat on their feet. Somebody feels heat in their knees. Come on. I don't see it tapped on here, but I can feel it. I see literally your knees have been lit on fire by God, and it's a good kind of warming fire where you're like, what is going on with my knees? God is healing your knees right now. Testify and let us know. Sure. He's doing it. Mm. And I've sat on this word, and I really feel like Sherry Denise Rabat. When you were talking about a fog of that mind, mm-hmm. I saw the Lord come in. And have you ever cracked an eggshell open and it wants to stick together because of a white film? A white film. I saw God. It was like a white film was over you. And it wasn't touching you, but it was in front of you. It was preventing you in some way, shape, and form. And Jesus himself came in and he ripped it off. He ripped it off. It was his, it was thin yet thick like milk you know that milky kind of fog you can't see through he ripped it away i decree and declare it is gone it is ripped off in jesus name no more confusion perfect clarity discernment yes shoot Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lord, I, I just thank you right now for your presence. I, I thank you, Lord, that, that you are doing mighty work right now in, on this broadcast. That, Lord, that, that you would meet us on a social media platform, Lord, to show your power and to show your love to your people, Lord. And, and I, I'm, I'm hoping I'm saying her name right. It's, it's Kamini, I think, is what her name was. And, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. I'm horrible with names sometimes because uh, I'm from southern Kentucky. That's what we do. Uh, but, Kamini, I'm, I'm seeing right now through God that you're asking for total restoration. And God has already said it's happening right now. That the only thing that you have to do is you have to accept it. Because you have been praying without ceasing about recovery. And, and I don't necessarily think that it's just recovery about yourself. But God is already telling you right now, all you have to do is step out in faith. Step out in faith that I am your redeemer and I am your restorer. And and if you step out, hmm. yeah, yeah, if, if you if you step out in faith right now and you ask and you say, God, I receive what you are trying to do in my life that you're going to automatically start being able to to see that restoration coming. Not only that restoration coming, but but I'm right now in the spirit I'm seeing angelic visits in your life. Because I think that there's so, either you or someone in your family that they're having a problem with accepting the fact that they can be completely restored. So God is saying, okay, if that's what it's got to take, I'll deal with you like I did Thomas, and I'll let you put the, the, your fingers in my nail holes, but you're going to see an angelic visitation that is going to take place, not to boast about the fact that, that you need to see this and that it's going to help you to believe, but to allow you to understand the, that the restoration that you're seeking is tiny in the eyes of God. And, and it's the faith of the mustard seed is what you need to be pursuing right now. The faith of a mustard seed is going to move mountains in your life. And if you start on that path of accepting God's power and accepting God's healing on the platform that it is a, the faith of a mustard seed, 
that can completely restore everything in your life, then God said, I will begin to move and I will begin to take shape in every aspect of your life that you have prayed so long for. But you're going to have angelic visitation. I claim that right now in Jesus' name. Yes, I yes, claim that. Yes, yes. And, and, and if you're, if, <laughs> if you, and, and I want you to try to, to, to add me to Facebook too, because I, I want to make sure that, yes. that, when, that whenever you start experiencing these things, I want your testimony. Because yes. God, is, God is telling me that your testimony is going to be large. Your testimony is going to be large. Because there's a lot of things that's going on that is taking place that you're not letting people know. So I receive that right now. That is, and, and I, I, want, I want to share and celebrate in your testimony when God deals with that. Amen. Wow. Amen. Mm. Amen. I'm telling you, I see worshipers on here. Yes. Now, I not only hear and see angels worshiping, but I can I hear an angelic choir and I can see them spiritually. You know, sometimes I see them in the natural, but this isn't more in the natural. This is spiritually like a vision that's faint. But I hear an angelic choir and I can see people weeping that are on the stream. You're in your home and you're crying and you're crying and you're weeping and you just keep praising God. Praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Did you know that you doing that? It's actually bringing it's it's adding to the stream, adding to those that are here because you have this feed open in your home while you're doing that. Your praise and your worship is affecting the other people who are watching this stream. And you thought you were so little and that what you were doing was nothing or that it was just between you and God. It's you and God, but because it's between you and God, there's an overflow and it is flowing out to the hurting and the wounded. When you get on these live streams, some of you, you're like, well, I don't participate. I'm just here. I'm just praising. I'm just worshiping God. I'm a that is participating. I'm telling you right now, people can feel it. I feel this mm. presence right now. There are some true intercessors on here, people who love the face of God. They, they don't stop at his feet, and, and they're fasting and praying and loving. I'm telling you, God is rewarding you now for doing yes, these God. things. He's coming after you and pursuing you with his love and his heart. Yes, God. But he says what's done in secret. He says when you do it in secret, when it's done in secret, he says he will reward you openly. He will reward you openly. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. It's like you're just going to, you're going to be like, why did this pastor favor me? Why did this person, why did my landlord favor, favor me? What about the neighbor? Why did they favor you? They favored you because you've been You've been grooming that relationship between you yes. and God, and you've been praying for other people. You've been fervently worshiping him, and yet you've been praying for other people. And God is now rewarding you openly. Openly. Thank you, Lord. I'll tell you, I, I have to admit, I really like uh, Ryan Tidwell's spirit. Ryan, you, yeah. you have got a servant's heart. Amen. And bless you that that is a that is a servant's heart right there in the name of jesus i i pray blessings over you right now mm. Ooh. Mm. i'm seeing bob wire coming off of you like the enemy had surrounded you with Bob Dwyer and he was literally pulling it taunt and it was piercing your body your flesh and we and it's loosening up, it's dissolving, it's literally melting, melting away, dissolving into nothingness. You're free. You're mm. free. You're free to go into the promised land. That cattle wire that was trying to keep you out and in some little old inferior field, the Lord says, yes. No, Come that on. grass over there, it's not necessarily greener because mm. it's on the other side. It's greener because that's your promised land. Yes. Enter in and we usher you in in the name of Jesus. Yes. It's for you. It is for you. God says you are worth it. He died for you. He loved you. He loves you. Mm. Mm. Jesus. Chris McTush, hello, brother. A great brother, a great brother in Christ that has, has allowed love, the love of God and, and has changed his entire life. Lord, I'm, I'm so thankful for him. And my brother, Robert Morrow, I've, this man of God is, 
is one of my accountability brothers. And, uh, and you talk about a brother uh, that gets word of the Lord. Uh, I'll tell you, you, uh, Prophet Tiffany, you may want to look at him one day to have a live because uh, this, this brother will, it's, it amazes me uh, of how God speaks. That's who again? Robert who Morrow. Again? Robert Morrow. Okay. And I, I just, I speak blessings over my brothers right now in Jesus name. I, I plead the blood over them and I speak forth blessings yes. of, of prosperity. I speak forth blessings of, of just getting to know Lord, the Lord deeper than what they do now. And, and I just thank God for what he's doing in their lives because uh, these are two true men of God that, that have been, they have been to the pits of hell and God has, has taken them by the hand and pulled them out. And, and they, they know the voice of God and they know how to hear the voice of God. So I'm, I'm so thankful uh, that, that God has put them around me and my family. Ah, so I plead the blood peace. of Jesus. Shoot. Amen, amen. I still feel oh. a travailing spirit. I mean, it's I'm I'm tearing up. I'm I mean, it's 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 coming right here. It's it's like it's wanting to mm-hmm. to be released, and and I I just feel that uh-huh. that God is wanting to to release that travailing spirit because what happens whenever we get that travailing mm-hmm. going on is that we're we're completely submissive to God. We're completely yes. submissive. And if there's ever been a if there's ever been a time that we have to be submissive, and we have to see that time of birthing is right now in in the in the body of Christ. Mm. I'm seeing like everybody on this stream is like a six year old little child, you know, and and Jesus is standing there and he's got on a casual shirt and it's kind of open in the front a little bit. You know, he's got a little bit of a hairy chest going on and he's just, but he's, you know, well dressed, but it's, you know, casual kind of, and he's like, come on, come in, come on. You know, I don't have that prim suit on to where you're going to wrinkle it or crumple it. Come on, jump up in daddy's lap. Come on, jump up in Jesus's arms. Come on. And Jesus is beckoning us into his heart and into his chest. And one of the things I keep hearing that song somebody needs to break out in song in their house i I literally there's a choir singing it's Mm. singing oftentimes i break out in song over people but i don't think it's for me to sing i almost thought it was for a minute but then it you know it just jesus lord jesus Mm. Jesus. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) i had never had a live stream like this before pastor brian I feel like we do this. Wow. I feel like we do this every Sunday at church. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's We're having it, church. We, I'll tell you, it's I, I could the stories I could tell you, but um, you're leading service right now, yes. sir. <laughs> <laughs> this is our church. Yes, this is, this is this is exactly what it is. And and it's <laughs> and, and I think God is is showing us this this way right now because this is what we have to do we we have to get rid of all the other nonsense we have to get rid of of all the other things and and we just have to focus on his presence we have to focus on on his face and and we have to focus on the fact that that when we ask holy spirit to come of course holy spirit lives inside of us but but we but hope to to bring forth heaven and to bring forth angels and to bring forth the spirit in one atmosphere, you know, we're ascending to a different realm. We're we're ascending to different realms in the spirit. And I think that that what we're doing is we're si- we're seeing that we're all seeing that we're going to a higher place, and and we have to continue to go to that higher place so that the that we can learn more about the things of heaven. And and my goal, and and I know that's probably yours, the same thing, Prophet Tiffany, is that I just yeah. want to sit at his feet. Mm, come on just to be able to sit at his feet and i just want to look and say i know you died for me and i just want to look at him and say you love me that much and just to hear mm-hmm. him say yes mm-hmm. yeah. because of all the things that we all have done in our life all the bad things that we've ever done all the sins that we've committed all the all the the things that we've done but yet we had a savior that said, I'm going to put all that sin on my back. I'm going to get 39 lashes on my back. I'm going to get put on a cross in Calvary and I'm going to die for the sins of the world. 
just to sit at his feet, to be able to say, Lord. And, and, and I know that some of us may even want to look at him and say, why would you do that? When, you're, when you know that you could have easily jumped off that cross, but you still did what you did for me. Is that not a world-changing statement? That, Lord, you did all this for me. I mean, it's, folks, right now, if you need healing, this is the time to start asking for it because you're in a different realm with the, with the Spirit of God right now. You're, you're getting as close right now as you can possibly try to get in the Spirit because you you're want to pursue to get to the throne and be like, God, I need this. It is not your will for me to do this and to have this. And I speak against infirmity right now. I speak against mm-hmm. sickness and illness right now. Go. Hey. I speak forth because, because my Savior took lashes Woo. so that I could be healed. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It, it, <laughs> Church, we got to get closer to God. Yes. Come on. We got to get closer to God. I don't care what you've been through in your past. I don't care if, if you've done every sin that, that you can possibly name in the oh. book and you got a notebook full of every sin that you've ever done. They can be washed away in the blink of an eye. Yeah. But, but they can't be washed away until you understand who your Savior is. It's not coming through to Hollywood. It's not coming through to music. It's not coming through uh, whatever else that, that plagues your life. It, it comes through the sun. And it, that's the only way that you can receive that. There's no other way. That, I don't care who is saying it. There's no other way. The Bible plainly states, Come no on. one shall see the Father but through the Son. That's right. Come on. That's word. And and if you're sitting there tonight and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we need to talk about that. Because you're missing out on the single greatest love Come that on. you will ever experience in your life. Your family, your wife, your husband, your kids, they will not show you the love that Jesus is showing you right now. Oh, come on. And that Ooh, and that geez. that heat that some of y'all are feeling, that's the Holy Spirit working inside of you right now. Some of you are right now are like this, bent over, because the presence of God is so hard on you right now. I'm bent over right now because of the fact that the that the Lord is speaking to me in such a way. I feel like there is an angel that's sitting on my back right now. <laughs> So what you need to do with your life is you don't you don't Ooh. need to sit and think about the things that you've done. You just need to ask God to forgive you and turn from them. You need to turn from them. You don't need to sit and worry about them. You need to sit and worry about who redeemed you from those sins and who died for those sins so that you can have everlasting life. Yes. And Ryan's made a great point. Every sickness... Everything, yes. and I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just steal his statement. So, so uh, Ryan's helping me preach. Um, everything must bow to the name of Jesus. The revelations plainly states that there is going to come a time of judgment when all of us shall answer to the to the one. Did y'all know that? That we will answer, and I want to hear, enter in my good and faithful servant. How, how great is that going to be that when this world is done and over with, when it's done and over with and we're standing before Jesus and he says, Brian, boy, you had a rough life, buddy, at the start. You ran from me. You done everything you could to get away from me. It was like playing tag with you. But man, <laughs> when you came back to me, and he's going to look and he's going to say, all right, you were saved. 
you were redeemed. You were baptized on such dates. Oh, I, I remember the day, Brian, that you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That was a fun day. Or as we like to call it in, in my ministry team, the bubbles, because I, I've, my, uh, our, our prophetess and our ministry team said that I received the bubbles. She said, that's what I received oh, was the bubbles. And, uh, and I laughed, I probably for four solid hours, but, uh, but that was the joy Woo! of the Holy Ghost. And Amen. Jesus is going to look through that book of life and he's going to look and he's going to see if your name is in that book. So I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have an altar call right now until we get back into more, more healing, because I know God's going to work in this still, but is your name in the land's book of life tonight? Can you truly say that with your own heart? Can you truly say mm -hmm. that that I, my my life is absolutely penetrated with Christ? And if it's not, you tell us we need to pray about that. And we need and what I want right now is I don't want anybody being embarrassed. What I want tonight is that when we get off this broadcast tonight that every person that is watching this has been saved and redeemed by the blood of the lamb. Come on. Because here's the thing, and, and I want you to understand this, too, because this is going to speak to somebody that has lost loved ones. I have lost loved ones. My wife has lost loved ones. And what I want you all to understand is that every time that someone that's not saved has heard the gospel, do you know that if they don't accept Christ and they die and go to hell, that that is all that they will remember for all eternity? They will remember every time that they had a chance to accept Christ and they didn't. Mm. Wow. That's not a scare tactic by any means whatsoever. That is, that is true. I don't want to die and have to think that there's a chance that I could die and go to hell. And I'm going to remember every time that somebody has tried to talk to me about Jesus. Come on. So right now, I want you all to bow your heads. Even if you think that you might have backslid, we're going to say this together because I want everybody oh. signed, sealed, and delivered. I'm going to bring up some Elvis <clears throat> music here. Signed, sealed, and delivered that when you go to sleep tonight, that you are saved by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. We're going to have a tent revival on Facebook right now. Come on. Amen. And, and if you, if you mm. said this with me, and, and Prophet Tiffany, after we get done saying this, I want you to put in chat. I don't want anybody being embarrassed. Put in chat right now that I did this. I accepted Christ or I accepted Christ because I was backslidden. Because I'm going to rejoice with you. Come Prophet on. Tiffany's going to rejoice amen. with you. Come on. Amen, amen, amen. So right now, Lord, Never going back. we're all going to say it. We're all going to say it right now. Amen. I'll say it again. I'll say it as many times as Jesus wants me to say it because I want to, be, I want to make sure I'm sanctified, okay? But, Lord, right now, we speak in the name of Jesus right now, Lord, that, Lord, we know that, Lord, that we're sinners. We know, Lord, that, that the only way to get to heaven is through you, the Son. And, Lord, right now, we repent of our sins. We ask, God, that you forgive us of where we have failed you in every area of our life. And Lord, we ask right now that you come into our life and you come into our hearts and our souls and our mind. And Lord, that you will allow us to receive you as Lord and Savior of our life. Lord, we receive you as our Savior and the King of our life. Lord, we thank you that right now, Lord, that salvation is moving across the world right now yes, through Lord. this social media platform. That, Lord, that you have freed us from hell, that you have freed us from our sin, and, Lord, that you yourself yeah. died, on the third, died on the cross and rose on the third day, and then you ascended to heaven where you now sit at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. That, Lord, that every time the devil wants to come back and bring up past things, that, Lord, you go into the courts of heaven and you open up the book and there is nothing in it. Because there's no argument. Because we've been bought by the blood of the Lamb. Lord, we receive you as Lord and Savior.
We receive you as Lord and Savior. And Lord, change our life, change our minds, change our hearts. And Lord, allow us to follow you and to pick up our cross. And Lord, to whoo, robo amana. Lord, that you allow us to take our cross, Lord, and walk across this world. Shoo. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, I just thank you. Shoo. <laughs> and there's the joy of the Lord right there. Oh my goodness, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank, thank you. you. Jesus, thank you. We Jesus. thank you, Lord. Woo. Lord, thank you for saving us. Thank you for Woo. dying on the cross at Calvary for us, Lord. <laughs> thank you for loving yeah. us enough, Lord. Woo. We thank you. And we plead the blood of Jesus over every person that has said this yeah. and has reset this. And Lord, that they know, oh. that they know, that they know that, Jesus Lord, when Jesus. that trumpet sounds, that they're going to be caught up in the air with you, Lord, and that we're going to go to heaven to be with you for all eternity. <laughs> and, Lord, my Bible plainly states that if, if one person in this place has not said that prayer, that, Lord, that in the book of Revelation it states that Jesus took the devil and the Antichrist and tossed them both into the pit of fire. Woo! And if you're not yes, serving come on, come Jesus, on, come on. that is who you are serving. And the end result to them, they get thrown into the pit. Woo! They get thrown into the pit. There's no win-win situation without Jesus. There's no win-win situation without Jesus in your life. So all those nasty ways that you all have lived, all the nasty ways I used to live, it's been washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. You have a Savior that loved you enough to die for you. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank Jesus. you, Jesus. Shoo. I love when, when the spirit <sighs> of laughter hits you. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord is just amazing. The Lord well, is so amazing. I just felt the Holy Ghost, and it must have transitioned all the way across this room because my wife felt it because she, she was the one hooping and all. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. She, Praise she the said Lord. she felt a wind. She you. said she felt a wind that came across yeah. this entire room. Shoo. Come wow. on, Jesus. Wow. See, see, look what the Holy Spirit does. Look what Jesus does. Look what our Father does. Yes. He's so good. They're so good. Come on. Um, as you were praying, Pastor Brian, I literally saw, at the end, I saw swords coming out of people's backs. Shoo. Where you'd been stabbed in the back, you'd been wounded and hurt. When you exchanged you didn't exchange there as you said that prayer as you repented of things come on you exchanged all of your hurt yes for his what for his forgiveness for his glory and he pulled those daggers out of your back it was like you kept getting so filled with so full of his glory and it was stretching you i saw it's like the swords it it Grabbing them out of the back and pulling them out. Angels were doing that. But I also saw many of them just popping out of your back yes. because the glory was pushing them out. The glory will do that. The, the healing balm of Gilead will go in, and it's powerful mm. and forceful. And it was causing swords that had been shoved in your back to be whoosh and just yeah. thrown away, thrown out to be returned back to the sender. And I also saw what looked like a giant octopus. Oh, It, it had wrapped around somebody. Somebody out there, you have envisioned yourself on a ship with the Lord. Mm. Like he's given you some kind of a ship and you're at sea or you're on a ship. You've been dreaming about ships, having visions about ships. And I saw an octopus loose your ship. Mm. I want to tell you, you are free tonight. you got yes. your freedom. Don't you doubt it. you got your freedom. The octopus loosed you and let you go and it went back to the abyss. Yes. It went back to the pit and it has left you. Don't don't go around looking for it. It's not there anymore. Mm, come on, brother. It. it can't find you again. Shh. It's loosed you. It let go of your feet. It let go of your knees. It let go of your ship. You are totally, totally free. I'm telling you right now. See some of the people right now. But see, but, so, see some of them yeah. said they've seen the ship and the yeah. octopus. Yeah. Un understand right now that the way that the, that the Holy Spirit has moved tonight that joy and and that that blessing and and being able to to see all that manifesting in the holy spirit that's how, that's how strongholds get dropped 
That's how strongholds get taken away right. is because of, of that love that, that's being processed and that glorifying of God and, and allowing Holy Spirit to have his way. That, that is what has to take place and has to transpire for those type of spirits to fall off of people. You know, we can't go into laying hands on people with those kind of spirits and saying, be gone in Jesus' name, because those are the ones that will tighten up more because it, it's attached to you. Those snakes and those octopus spirits will attach themselves to you. You know, especially with the big suction cups of the octopus and stuff, those things attach to you and you can't pull them off. So it has to loosen its grip. And how does it loosen its grip? Mm -hmm. But by the joy of the Lord and being able to, to, to see that that take place, your your demeanor changing. I'm, I'm seeing people's complete you, complete demeanors change right now. You're you're gonna wake up in the morning and you're gonna see a different person in the mirror in the morning because of the things that are falling off of you because of the realm that the Holy Spirit is taking us in tonight. So you need to get up and rejoice in that in the morning. Some of you need to rejoice right now because of those things that's fallen off of you. Never, never, ever take for granted what God is doing and taking those things off of you because that means that, one, you are pursuing God more than you're pursuing that thing that's on you. And that's, that's when right. it's breaking off. It's breaking off of you. To accept that. Receive yeah. that right now in Jesus' name. Receive that restoration and healing that we've been talking about all night. Yeah. Shoo. Shoo. And for those who've had any lingering effects in your mind, I, we, you know, we just speak that the fire and flame of the Lord will go into yes. the recesses of your mind for a greater, deeper healing. And again, those things, um, anything from octopus to squid, whatever these mind warping things are, they are loosing you and letting you go. They're coming out of your sinus cavities. Come on. They're coming out of spiritual areas. They're coming out of mm. your emotions, out of your will. They're coming away from your mind. They're coming away from you. They are destroyed and dissolved in the name of Jesus. Let God do it. Let him work. Thankful hearts will literally break through a lot of things. Yes. Crying out to God will break through. Repentance breaks through. Praise and worship breaks through. These are all weapons and tools in our tool belts. Yes. Calling on others. This is a corporate setting right now. We're having I church or church, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And it's agreement. The power of agreement is a weapon. Faith is a weapon. Mm. Believing God instead of what your eyes tell you is a weapon. Mm. Come on. You're, you're going somewhere, prophet. You're going Thank somewhere. You, I pray right now that... The, the Holy Spirit is telling me we need to we need to pray in the spirit for just a little bit. And and if, if you pray in the spirit, I want you to start praying in the spirit with Prophet Tiffany and I. And let's 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 keep this. Let's keep this going. Let let's ascend even more. And, and let's go to realms that of God that we're seeing things happen. And we're going to see more of these things start breaking off of people tonight. Let's ascend more. Pray in the spirit. Ask Holy Spirit. Move moving this because right now we're going places that not many people want to go because sometimes it's it's misunderstanding but right now we don't care because we're listening to holy spirit so <laughs> pray in the spirit right now and we'll pray in the spirit for a little bit and then we're gonna we're gonna let the holy spirit have his way the rest of the evening here so yes lord we thank you I Shanda in and Moho Shodo Bakashada in and a kete. I Ketebo Koshodo Imeke. I Roma Hashada in and a Kotoba da ede de Shundo Tote Miki. I Kete de de Mo. I don't know who should do a de Mekete in the Bokota. I feel right now and, and continue to pray in the spirit, everybody, that there's somebody with a very bad intestinal problem that's, that's it's taking place right now. That there is an intestinal problem. 
come on, come on, prophet. <laughs> that there, there is an intestinal problem that's taking place in your life. And, and let, you know, if that's you, let us know in the chat so we can pray with you about that. But I, I'm seeing a, a, an intestinal problem. It, it could be the fact that, that your, your system doesn't flow as, as well as it should. Shoot. And, and the Lord is saying right now, I'm making the crooked thing straight. And, and we, we need to pray for that because right now this could be the one chance. And I feel like that you're getting ready to go to a doctor's appointment because of that intestinal problem. And, and what the last doctor's visit that you got wasn't good. It wasn't good at all. Janice saying, I don't know, but I have had stomach, ache stomach aches for a week. Well, right now we're going to come against that. And, yes. uh, and again, intestinal problems. If you have an intestinal problem, let us know in chat because the Holy Spirit said it as plain as day. I had to turn around for a second because I thought somebody was behind me. But intestinal problems. If you have an intestinal problem, and, and we've already got one person that said that they have stomach problems, we're going we're gonna to believe in that. And it could be somebody that watches the replay, and that's perfectly fine. Amy, we're going to pray for you too. We'll pray for that IBS because that's, no, that, that's no. something that God will heal just as plain as day. And, and it's uncomfortable. And, and we want to make sure that, that we, yeah, come on. Come on, Robert. Break the ceiling. We've got to. And, Lord, right now I speak forth healing in, in, in the stomach and intestinal regions of people that are watching this broadcast. I plead the blood of Jesus right now, Lord, that as, as they are setting there, Lord, that you are beginning to, to the Holy Spirit fire is going inside of them, Lord. And that, Lord, that, the, that intestinal tract is starting to heal. It's starting to cleanse, and Lord, that, that they're starting to feel the fire of the Holy Spirit, God, in their stomach area. That, Lord, that it is starting to burn, Lord, not, not in a bad way, God, but knowing that the Holy Spirit is doing yeah. what it's supposed to do. We claim the healing through the stripes of Jesus. We claim that as they go back to the doctor, Lord, that they will have a clean bill of health. <sighs> I'm, I'm feeling right now, Lord, that, that they were getting ready to have a major colonoscopy done, that it was to the point that they were even talking about that, that uh, they have uh, polyps and, and, uh, and maybe even tumors inside their stomach, and they were, they were, the doctors were afraid that there was cancer there. Well, cancer, right now, we speak in the name of Jesus that you have to go because right now everything has to bow to the name of Jesus, and that includes cancer. That includes intestinal problems. That includes IBS. That, that includes just basic stomach issues that we're having. Lord, line the bodies up. <laughs> line the bodies up. Make the crooked thing straight, as you say in your word, Lord. Lord, we give you the, the praise and the glory, God, of your healing hand that still heals. Lord, there's so many that have forgotten about your healing power, God. But let your power reign tonight. Let your power reign tonight, God. That people are going, the multitudes are going to be healed. Lord, you fed the 5,000 just by, by raising a basket, basket up over your head with one fish and loaves in it. Lord, right now I pray for healing of the multitude. We raise our basket of healing, God. And we, we claim it on every soul that is watching this broadcast. I come in the name of the Lord. Shoo. And as you were hearing, as you were seeing that word, I want to explain the difference between prophets or the difference between hearing from the Lord and such, you know, you heard what you heard very clearly. And the reason I knew what you were saying was right on point is because I heard chains in bellies are letting go of victims. Shoot. That's what I wrote on this paper. But what you said is what it is in the natural. You know what I'm saying? You actually tagged it, what it is in the physical body. So if you're a seer, if you're a prophet, your, your words you hear from God, this is how you know the other person's telling the truth and they're right with Holy Spirit. Come on. We didn't get the exact same word, but it all fit together. Yes. It means the same thing. 
That's how you know they're hearing from Holy Spirit. Mm. I don't know why I had to throw that out there. Come but on. I'm telling you right now, and this is for somebody on here, stop mentioning your past. Yes. Stop mentioning what caused you to be sick. Stop yes. mentioning it. Don't do it again. Do you want to live there? Do you want to stay there? This may seem like a hard word. Sometimes people are like, Mama Tiffany, I can't believe you said that at me. Stop it. Get out of the past. Stop saying, well, it's my fault or it's, or it's this fault. This thing has caused me to be this way. Stop it. If you keep saying it over and over, and decades later, you're still saying it, there's an issue. If something happened to you yes. and months have gone by, you're going to have to start rebuking that thing because you should not be three years, five years, 10 years down the road still complaining about a thing. Rebuke it. I rebuke it right now in the name, in of, the Jesus, name of Jesus out of everybody's life here. Mm -hmm. You are going to get a, a gap, a doorway right now to be able to forget and leave the thing behind. You're not going to forget it happens. You're going to forget to think on it. Mm. There's a difference. Come on. You're just going to choose not to remember it. Okay? And as some of those thoughts come back, because they try to, several days are going to have gone by and you hadn't thought on it. So when it does, you're going to be like, where'd that come from? I hadn't thought on that in days. That's when you know that's a devil trying to come at you to command it to go and say, I refuse you thought. Oh, no. I have been fine. You're lying to me. Come on, you got to make sure that thing stays gone. Yes. So stop living in the past hurt. The past, you're going to have to. you got to make, wage holy war. Do you want to come out of the pit? Mm. You are going to have to start digging your fingernails and your hands into the side walls of the well that you were thrown into by the enemy. Mm. It doesn't mean you're not believing God to reach down and grab you out mm. because he will. But you are going to have to also mm -hmm. stick your fingers That's in good. until he responds. And he will respond. That's good. I'm telling you right now in Jesus' name, he's responding to you. He loves you. Yes. The Bible plainly states that the tongue breeds what? Life and death. Ooh. So if, if okay. you're waking, I'm, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to let my apostolic anointing rise because that's, that's it's a good time for this to happen. But if you are waking up every day and the first thing you say is, oh my goodness, and you start calling out whatever that pain is and whatever that thing is, all you're doing is giving credit to it. That's all you're doing. You're giving it life. If you wake up every day, I'm going to give you guys something that's going, you're going to be able to take with you the rest of your life. If you wake up every day and you say, God, today I am healed of everything that is, that is plagued me my entire life. Today, Lord, I'm going to get closer to you than I ever have before. Today, I am going to speak life instead of death. Today, I'm going to speak goodness over everybody in my family and all my friends and all my church family. If you wake up every day breathing life into your situation instead of death, then guess what happens? Life starts coming about. If you keep chopping a tree down, what eventually happens to the tree? It dies. But if you keep watering that tree and you keep nurturing that tree, what happens? It grows. And it grows, and it grows until it's a fully matured tree. Well, right now, I'm looking at a bunch of people that are fully matured trees, because I'm claiming that in your life right now in Jesus' name. Because after yes. tonight, we're not speaking death over our lives anymore. That's right. We're not speaking death into other people's lives either. Come on. Come on. Well, Sister Sally, I'll tell you one thing. Sister Sally down the road. She did this and this and this. Instead, we need to turn around and say, in Jesus' name, I bless Sister Sally. Because yeah, Sister yeah. Sally could be the reason that I'm getting a revelation or I'm getting uh, an as ascension in the Spirit. Because Sister Sally might be praying for me. We've got to quit with the fact that we can say whatever we think we can say. Guys, this is a realm of the Spirit that needs to be entered in with love and joyful happiness and loving the people that you go to church with, your family, everything. Mm -hmm. We can't speak death into people's lives. We can't five do it. Five minutes in the video automatically ends. I'm sorry. They've put time limits on Facebook. That's all right. You go ahead. You go, you go ahead, Prophet. So, you guys, uh, I just want to remind y'all 
uh, that we have the prophetic school. I want to pray over our special guest here. And tonight I saw you operate apostolically as an apostle. That's a, that's nice to see men stepping up into what God has for them. And so um, if we do have that prophetic school, we have levels one, two, and three uh, levels. If you want to start somewhere, I suggest starting with level one. You probably could do level three if you've never had anything else, but you don't want to take level two without having gone through level one. But you can apply for whichever one you want. Message me in the messenger. You're welcome to do that. Please sew into our guests. I'll put in the comments. I love to do that for our guests. I love for them to receive, um, you know, some of you love to do that. God puts it on your heart. You're able to do that. And so I would love just to speak a blessing over you. Thank you, Apostle. Um, Apostle Brian, I'm just mm. seeing. <laughs> Shoot. I'm seeing Jesus, you know, you've got the earbuds in right now, but I'm seeing Jesus putting his hat on you. Mm. He's putting, and it's the hat of a good steward. It's a good Shh. steward's hat. He's also putting in his earbuds. He's putting on his very own. He took off his cloak and put his cloak on you. Oh, my goodness. And I'm seeing him washing your feet. And he's putting his own sandals and his own shoes and boots. He's lacing. He's like he's putting his sandals on you, but he's also putting his boots on you. And he's lacing them up himself. He has decided you're going. Oh, my goodness. It's like you're going off into battle. You're going to war. But the victory is already yours. And you're dressed in his armor. It's not your own armor. You're dressed in his armor. Oh, thank you, Lord. And I am seeing Deanna like she's behind you oftentimes where you can lean back. And when you feel like, I don't know how much more we can push forward into new territory, honey. And she goes, that's okay. Uh, just lean back. That's all right. Do you feel more refreshed now? And she's pushing you, not in a bad way, but she's helping to keep you up on your feet and to keep your arms.